and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for the Mythic Invitational Qualifier. As y'all know, I'm going to be playing this with Abzan Hero. We're going to have a shorter stream today. This is all we're going to be doing for the stream because also, as y'all know, uh, I was gone the last three days. Um, I was traveling, looking at, looking at houses and stuff like that, um, but I am just got back in. Uh, woke up really early this morning, had a couple of flights, just got back in. Um, so, you know, pretty tired from the traveling and stuff. So uh, we definitely wanted to play this event and stream this and record this and everything. But this will be it for today. For tomorrow, I guess you can't really read this over here because of other lettering. Tomorrow we'll be doing our set review starting at 1 o'clock Eastern, where we go through each and every card from theros beyond death because we now have the complete set we now know the complete set so we're going to be going through each and every card talking about how could you use that card in standard giving it a letter grade so even you know even cards that you know most likely won't see a lot of play we'll talk about like how could you play this card kind of thing so it's it's a fun exercise and of course i'll be relying on y'all from chat also there i haven't been able to keep up too much with the spoilers this spoiler season i've been uh, just it's just been a very busy month for me so some some of the cards uh may be ones that i don't that I won't be too familiar with whenever we go through them um but i'll be i'll kind of look over them tonight after the mythic invitational qualifier but let's get to our main event so this event is to this is where if you place in the top 1200 in mythic in um limited or constructed um in one of the in any in any season which a season is a month you qualify for this they do this i i believe four times a year i believe they just do one of these with each set release basically i don't quote me on that but that, that's my um that's my guess but anyway there's there's around that that many of them and so uh you know you get qualified and and then you know a couple months later you can play in it but yeah, it's basically, it's a two-day tournament. Day one, you try to get as many wins as you can, up to 10 before two losses. And then the top 125 people, that, that however many wins they get, they qualify for the second day. Um, hopefully we get there. The deck that I'm going to be playing, as we talked about before, earlier on in the week, I'm going to be playing this Abzan Hero deck list. Um, you know, not, nothing new from the deck that we played. Uh, the last time that we played this deck which was our last stream on Tuesday, that would have been. I did not do well. I didn't do well with the deck at all. We had really bad mana issues and stuff, and I didn't do well, but that that's good. That means I was saving my luck for today. There's no day two anymore. Oh, all ten wins get in. So then do like nine wins get in or eight wins get in, or is it just ten wins get in? I don't know. I guess they changed it. It is It is a new year. It's a new decade, so things change. Um, uh, but yeah, so I was, you know, didn't do well, so now I'm saving my luck for today. That that was the that's the plan, you know. All right, but anyway, so just ten wins, so only ten wins get in. Okay, well we gotta gotta win some matches, so let's get started. It it doesn't have that much longer to go, six and a half hours. So we got we got to play these ten matches in six and a half hours. Should be doable. Don't expect. Don't expect ten matches to take longer than that. But here we go. Choco getting the resub in there. Thursday can't get here fast enough. That is correct. Yeah, Thursday. So Thursday is whenever we're going to have Theros on Arena. That's going to be super exciting for sure. Um, set review is over here, 1 o'clock Eastern. Yeah, the mat, you have 30 minutes max for a match, but that's I have 30 minutes. My opponent has 30 minutes. So you, that could theoretically take one hour. Plus, that doesn't count sideboarding time which could be another like i don't know whatever they have it set at like two minutes two and a half minutes for each one like some i think maybe two and a half so for the two games it's like five minute five minutes total so you could play a match right under an hour and five minutes so 
So obviously I need untapped land, but we're on the draw. We have this Temple of Skrylands. I have to ferry for my avatar. Yuck. Should probably change that. Raru. Oh, great. We get to play against my least favorite deck right away. Um, as we've talked about, this is, this is uh, you know, we're playing against an adventure deck. Um, adventure deck is, you know, good chance it's my worst possible matchup. I don't, I don't know if there is one that's worse. Um, every single card in their deck is a two or three for one. And that allows them to just outgrind other mid-range decks. But it's my least favorite deck just from a design perspective. I really don't like the design of Lucky Clover and Edgewall Innkeeper. Anyway. Like I think the I think the two for one cards are good enough. I don't think they need I don't think they need to be like, you know what, these two for ones, we need to give them more reason to play them. Let's let's print these things. But they did. But anyway, that's that's not what this is about. Um, I already have one Midnight Reaper, but Midnight Reaper is pretty solid. I think I'm going to put it down to the bottom with my ability for Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord, to be able to bring back this Midnight Reaper as well. If I keep that Midnight Reaper, I'm not playing a land next turn. Which, missing land drops... Is a good way to lose. So it's a, it's a good way to lose. Hey, my Tai Tai, what's up? Well, I'd rather play Paradise Druid or Midnight Reaper to continue on, um, to continue my battlefield on. Obviously, I need to get rid of Edgewall Innkeeper as early as possible. And this game is very over. Beanstalk Giant plus Lucky Clover is pretty unbeatable. A second Beanstalk Giant and a second Lucky Clover. This game's over. So I can't even play Midnight Reaper, even though it's the card that I want to play. I'm, I just can't even play it because of Brazen Borrower. Hey, Dragon Cackle. I can't do anything to stay alive. Ugh. 
Yeah, this is this is just my worst matchup. I don't. I don't have much of anything here. Um, bringing in Knight of Autumns because Lucky Clover is pretty broken. Bringing in a Legion's End. I guess you know Legion's End is only good against Edgewall Innkeeper. I saw Bone Crusher Giants, just a huge headache. We're gonna go with Othakaya. I mean, taking out to Spark and a Tulsimer. I may not want these trophies. No, I probably still need trophy for Clover. No, Duress does absolutely nothing. I mean, if you get lucky enough to take a Clover before it hit, but that's just not... It's a very low probability of occurring. Take out a Mortify. Maybe I should play this this Tulsmer again instead of another Mortify. Okay, I'm gonna play a Kaya's Wrath also. I'm gonna play just like one Kaya's Wrath. <sighs> probably over one of the six mana walkers, probably Ugin. Like, would I feel better if this was Kai's Wrath? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, Kaysons, re refresh your stream. And a notification, like, near chat will likely appear for you to send. I mean, I want my fourth land, but I, I really don't want more temples. I think we can find another fourth, a different land, but I do want land. But I want to play this temple next turn, and then, you know, turn... Because I probably want Knight of Autumn on three, and then these things on four. I don't really have time for another temple. But a, a temple is better than no land, and so... Hopefully we don't just get, you know, all five and six mana cards and not another land. Thanks, Tyro. Thanks, Leroy Jenkins. No, Duress is not a good card in this matchup. Are we just not going to draw another land? I can put that down to the bottom because we got to see another four cards. So far, we're 0 for 3. <laughs> this would be really sad if we, if all four, we just completely miss out. Do they ever not have Lucky Clover Beanstalk Giant? Is that ever a thing? Is that even a possibility? Hey, Burton. Thank you so much. Thanks for that resub there. It's our 10th sub of the day. Um, I think Golgari Queen's like a better card to play where you get to go towards the ultimate with Golgari Queen and be able to have it out for the minus. But I'm going to play Soren because I don't really want to play Golgari Queen and they get rid of Gol Golgari Queen somehow and I don't get to minus. I don't get any um, like abrupt decay effect. I want Golgari Queen to be an abrupt decay. Hopefully we keep drawing lands. Hopefully we draw a green land.
Thanks, Kralj. Definitely seems like they have Brazen Borrower. The weak feed the strong. Two borrowers. <clears throat> that would be very nice if they do not draw a land. This turn. Do not want them to draw land. No land, please. Hmm. Well, that's not a land. So I guess I got what I asked for. If I Golgari Queen, eat the Lovestruck Beast. Actually, that may not be the worst. Then I attack for two, they don't block, then they attack and kill my Golgari Queen. We're going to go this route. So this puts eight power in play. They can only play one more land, so they're dead. We just kill Lovestruck Beast, and they die. All right, we stole a game. Yeah, Tulsmar kill in the 1-1, one, one, and then Golgari Queen for the Beast afterwards was like kind of the easy line, and I was, I was seeing if, if they're, you know, it's kind of... Doing a little math and kind of seeing how the, the turns would play out of, like, if they, we had a better line. But no, I think this was the, the best line. Yeah, so we're still in the game. So we get we get a game three. Um, maybe they will not have Lucky Clover into Beanstalk Giant for game three. I sure hope not. I mean, I can't, I just, like, Assassin's Trophy is my only thing that, that destroys Clover on two, like, before their turn three. So I could play a third trophy and take out the second Mortify. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, Matthew. Um, are right, going to bring in a Kaiser Wrath over the Ugin? Tulsimer instead of Soren. I kind of want the second Tulsimer out here. I'm 
just gonna play two of the Gaia. No, nope, I'm. <clears throat> I'm gonna play the other Tulsmore instead. Their their whole deck are adventure creatures. They're creatures. I don't want to rest creatures. Not playing to us. Yeah, Thought Distortion is basically just for the blue-white control matchup, or if you randomly play against like a Fires control deck. No Clover. Yay. <sighs> Agile Innkeeper, why? And one mana card. Ridiculous. Thanks, Mutarino. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. Um, I hate that I'm ramping them already on turn two. Is it really the problem with Assassin's Trophy? It's not... It's not the removal spell you want to see early on in your hand at all. So getting kept this out here so that I can... Uh, Play Temple of Malady, Golgari Queen next turn to have Golgari Queen kill Lovestruck Beast. I I would be shocked if we win this game. Well, one, I would have been shocked if we win this match anyway. This is our worst matchup, but we're, we were on the draw and had to Assassin's Trophy on turn two. They have five mana. Yeah, that's over. All right, so I guess I just should not have trophied. Just let them draw cards, I guess. It's kind of a no-win situation. The land fights for us. if we meet again so i don't have any plan of keeping this nessa from ultimating no plan whatsoever with that it's just going to ultimate but i can play tulsimer and then if tulsimer stays around i can play garrick and have garrick make wolves that trigger tulsimer casens with that risa Thank you, Kaysons. It's our second or twelfth sub of the day. The record is up here, I guess. It's easier to see. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Be wary of the ground you walk on.
No, I don't have any noxious grasps. Um, I'm loading up onto Spark. I mean, I, Dispark does everything I want Noxious Grasp to do. I guess this matchup I could kill a 1-1 one, one or a 5-5 five, five with Grasp. Uh, but it also does not trigger Hero of Precinct 1. All right, so we already got our first loss. Let's hopefully get some wins after this. All my opponent has to do would be tech up on a land and attack. That's all they'd have to do. I really do not like that deck that we just played against. So, hopefully play something else. Ah, yeah. Yep, I know Carrollton real well, Matthew. Yeah. Assassin's Trophy is definitely my least favorite card in my deck. I got the basic plane so that I could have Assassin's Trophy on turn 2, followed by Kethos on 3 without having to shock all of the time. It's looking like that was an unnecessary keep, though, now. I'm not sure if I want to shock in for trophy. So, like, let's say they play Rotting Regisaur this next turn. Do I want to pay two life right now, trophy Rotting Regisaur on their turn so that I can untap and play Kethys and have that tempo? The answer is no. I'd rather them untap and discard a card with Rotting Regisaur. So with them had not, I mean, obviously I didn't know they wouldn't have any kind of two drop. So them having no kind of two drop, keeping that planes, looks unnecessary. I mean, obviously, this is the yes, yes, Ember. Yeah, this is just Ember Cleave. Like, obviously, I mean, they could have Rimrock Knight as well. Like it's Rimrock Knight, Ember Cleave. Um, less likely is Black Lance Paragon.
If I don't block, I'm looking at taking minimum 12. 15, taking minimum 15, and I'm at 17. If I don't, So if I don't block, I'm saying I'm going to be taking 15. I was hoping it was Blacklands Paragon or Rimrock Knight. I think that was my best chance. All right, so lesson learned, shock in on turn two. Just shock in on turn two. I would think of just spark and night of autumn. So this is the easy sideboarding. Obviously, Dispark is for Embercleave. Knight of Autumn, kind of the same thing, but it'd be after they attack. Considering playing one Garrick over a Knight of Autumn really being for with Tulsimer and play the ability to gain a lot of life. A big part of my deck is starting off with the two drops with Hero of Precinct 1 and Paradise Druid. We have not had hands that we start off with the two drops, but we haven't really had mulligans. I'm going to play a Garrick, but I'm not going to play the Soren. Soren's certainly at its best whenever we're attacking. If we get to a point in the game where we're where we are where we are attacking, I like our chances. <laughs> I can't keep this. All right, I can keep this. Yes, Kenrith is very good against uh, Acro. Okay, we're going to do the old turn two Paradise Druid to help us cast Archaia's Wrath. It's an odd strategy. This is where I'm at in life. Thanks, Mars. Thanks, Joy. So kind of looking for like a planeswalker. Um, yeah, like you know something that you know doesn't die to Kaiser Ath. Of course.
Still didn't activate even after I cast the Mortify. Certainly hoping they were going to play another creature out, or two. And did not get rewarded for waiting. Disparks for Embercleave. It's just too risky to. I would. I would normally just want to play. Ca just activate Castle. And then block the three one with the castle. That would be my. That would be what I'd normally want to do if we had more life. Like if you know if we both had twenty life or something. But it's just too risky against Embercleave because we just die. And so it's just too risky there. Alright, so we right, made it to a game three again. I like our chances a lot more in this one than, than the previous one, but we're going to have to come through here on the draw. The Knight of Autumn certainly the card that I'm not so sure about. All right, let's go. Garrick pairs perfectly with Tulsimer. Like, when we stabilize, we have to have a way to turn the corner. And Garrick can do that with or without Tulsimer, but with Tulsimer is incredible. Sorry, Kenrith, I like you, but we're not going to win this game because we have another 5 drop in our, our hand right away. So no red mana. Which is nice. Don't have to worry about Ember Cleave. It's obviously not nice. Well, playing Kethis here means that Tulsmer costs four, but I do need to shock to cast Tulsimer next turn. I'm 
so glad they didn't have another Black Lance Paragon. Never mind. Yeah, basic forest. It's a wonderful draw. Just have one card left. The the debate is whether I want to trade cat this for a claim contender. That's the debate. Do I want to trade cat this for a claimed contender? No, I'm just going to jump block. pretty good. I would need another legendary card in my good. No black man's paragon. Need another legendary card in my graveyard. Oslin. Thanks for that resub with the tier three sub. I uh, need one more card in my graveyard before we can activate Kethis to do to do anything. I Sony Thousand Eyed in a Yara Citadel. Yeah, I mean it could work. It could definitely work. You can you can get a bunch of stuff in your graveyard. Go 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 Golgari color. I was thinking I was doing that during my turn to see if I hit a land drop, but I guess I already played the land to play the castle to do that, so that was kind of unnecessary, but oh well. All right. We got our first win. I like that matchup a whole lot more than the first one. All right, we're one and one. We're on the board. GG's. <laughs> Thanks, Escoria. Um, the first matchup was Teamer Adventures. I don't like that matchup at all. Well, hopefully, we find an untapped land. Here with this temple, maybe we can play a Paradise Druid on turn two. No, I'm not MD. Um, 
and one word early opinion about Theros. Excited. Yeah, I like the Jun Sacrifice matchup. We have that's kind of the reason to play these cards, but you know, with Golgari Queen is a big part of that. Destroying all the stuff, but you know, Knight of Autumn, Golgari Queen, Mortify. Just have have a lot of good removal. We need ten wins. Twelve word late opinion about M nineteen. Um, the Elder Dragon cycle was fun, but I wish it was better. No, there's not Idle Ray. Uh, but we can't lose anymore. We gotta win nine more in a row. We don't get any more losses. Well, that's not true. Ultimate says that 50% in the MCQ are jund. That's definitely not true. No, I don't really care about snipers. Um, I don't know. I don't. Really, I haven't. I don't. I haven't really talked with them, so I don't know. <laughs> can you imagine? It, can you imagine winning the next eight games and then losing the last one? Yep, <laughs> I can imagine that. I wouldn't be thrilled per se. That can happen. I think I'm supposed to Othakaya first before Golgari Queen, so that whenever we play Golgari Queen in minus, and they can attack Golgari Queen, we get the Othakaya trigger. And it kind of cleanly lets me play this temple, this temple, where then I can have a swamp. I think I'm just going to play Kenny. Let's see, it's probably like Black Lance Paragon. I think I'm going to play Kenra. Whoa. Did you see Kenra coming down? Did you see all of these little banners? They all like flew to the middle. Like they like they all had like a bunch of like it was like a like a helicopter dropping down and like all this wind propelled them. Does it do anything if you click on the crowd? No. Gotta protect against Black Lance Paragon, can't block. What's up, Toasted? Thank you. <laughs> yep. Yep, I see you right over here, Storm. Yeah, it stormed. Yeah, it was a bad storm last night. Last night there was a bad storm, but it was gone this morning before my flights, thankfully. So I'd like to draw a land where I can have Golgari Queen plus to spark. Ideally. Idella. Nope. Because Cru Crusader, Crusader like just keeps filling their hand and everything. I can kill like I can kill this Knight of the Ebon Legion. Like this thing's not going to kill me. This Crusader's this Crusader's going to kill me though. Champion.
that out of there. Back onto them. So right now, I'll just be taking four. If they, they pass priority, I'm not going to be doing anything else. Oh, dang, Storm, I didn't hear that. Yeah, they could play another Ember Cleave now. Which, that is a possibility. I don't, don't have another to spark. I'd uh, just be mortifying whatever creature they ember cleave. I don't want to mort the reason why I didn't just mortify the Knight of the Ebon Legion to start with is because of Black Lance Paragon. Because I do that, they Black Lance Paragon give their Fervent Champion Death Touch and my Kenrith dies. And I can't I can't risk that. So they attack with both. I'm just going to do the uh, the straight ahead blocks. But having access to six mana is good for either Mortify plus gain five life or putting three counters with Kenrith. Don't have any uh, creatures to put into play from the graveyard yet. Paradise Druid is about to die probably. Yeah, it's all yeah, got a bluff settle. Got a bluff settle. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, I think my opponent's just kinda of doing math and everything. Figuring out what they want to do. That's unfortunate. I'm not gaining the five life because I'm going to use Mortify to kill this thing. So I want to play Golgari Queen on an empty battlefield, sacrificing 
Um, let's use Temple first. We're going to sacrifice the Oath of Kaya. I could take up with Bulgari Queen first. I am mostly just hoping they don't have a, another haste creature. Fervent Champion's like their only haste creature, and they already played two of them. So that was really... The main card I did not want to see was a third Fervent Champion. I don't think they have any other haste creatures. good. Sothian! Welcome. The house hunt was very good. Thank you. Thank you. I've... It's not final or anything, but I found the, the house that I would like, and I am working towards getting that whole process finished up and everything. Yeah, both of these scry lands were pretty nice. The last turn, having you know, double scry land, that really helped dig No, I lost game three against the team or Clover deck. All right, second Ember Cleave down. This game, this has been a very long game against the aggro deck. Kind of forgot that this was game one <laughs> until I checked like a little bit ago. Now Soren can minus five and bring back Kenrith. And, you know, Hero makes the extra little 1-1s one -one that we can sacrifice to Golgari Queen because our random card is better than a 1-1. One -one. I sacrificed a creature that had Summoning Sick that just came on the battlefield with Soren, so there, that's why I sacrificed before attacking because it could not attack. So this is the sideboarding I just did. No, never mind. I brought in trophy for another Dispark. Maybe I should keep the two Disparks. I think I'm gonna get rid of Akaya on, like on the draw. Akaya is a little slow. I'm gonna just play. I'm gonna just play one Kaya. And keep two Dispark. I mean, it sparks only for one card, but that one card is the card that... <sighs> yeah, that one card's going to be the card that allows my opponent to win this game. I 
taking Soren out. Yeah, Soren is good in the, in this matchup, but I'm taking Soren out because I kind of like all of my cards are good in this matchup. Basically, like this is this is the kind of matchup I want to be facing. But I guess I'm going to take Soren out because we're bringing in a lot of removal, and if we just have a lot of removal in hand and a Soren, the Soren's not really helping out. The Soren helps out whenever you're able to attack, and by the time I get to to attack, I'm I'm probably winning. So Soren can be like a, a dead card in hand while I'm getting beaten down. And so therefore I'm sideboarding it out. Thought Distortion is for blue-white control. Hero. Precinct one. How many precincts are there in Ravnica? We should have like hero of precinct twelve. If I keep Paradise Druid, I'm playing Paradise Druid before Hero, but this curve works pretty well with playing Hero next turn. So I'm gonna just do that and not keep the par keep the Paradise Druid. There's ten precincts, one for each guild. Which guild is precinct one then? Ooh, it has a has a quote. When the ah, stop moving. That's probably me moving. All right. When the established order falters, what remains are ordinary people and their struggle to survive. Whoa, that's deep. No cleave. Likely Blacklands Paragon in hand. Which Hero of Precinct 1 matches up very well against Blacklands Paragon. Who's the character? This is... Um, it's the Azorius Guild Leader. Um, what's his name? Like Azor. Azor. Interesting. So they allowed me to block and wanted to see if I wanted to block while having a Noxious Grasp. So they were, they would rather that I blocked instead of using a Noxious Grasp. That's gotta mean Black Lance Paragon in hand. It's gotta. Oh, it's Asperia. It's it's Spiria. Asperia. That's the name of the person, not Azor. Asperia. Because Azor is just chilling in Vixalon, drinking mai tais, and hanging out on the beach with shirtless Jace Cunning Castaway. According to Switch Chat, at least. We get another Othakaya trigger, trigger by <clears throat> playing Golgari Queen after Othakaya. That that's kind of like the good part about playing Golgari Queen there instead of Mortify. I guess I do have to shock for that. Maybe it was just worth it just playing Mortify. 
it's like why why shock for an Othakai trigger that just gains you the same life that you just paid? Well, I guess it's not like I'm passing because like Stormfist Crusader, I had to kill. Like, you got to kill that right away. Okay. So this is Paragon. They're gonna upkeep, play the three one. Um. I'm going down to three. I probably need to trophy. I probably need to trophy this castle lock twain. Can I afford to do that? So I go down to three. But then I go back up to six, kill that of the two blockers. So I guess I have Tulsimer, kill the Fervent Champion. So the reason not to tro trophy the land end of turn is because if, if I do that, they get to float. They had one mana on tap. They had just the land on tap. So if I do that, they float mana, go get a new land, get to use that mana. They could have played the Black Lance Paragon at end of turn, and then I would have been dead. So if I would have trophied at end step, I died. That's a pretty good reason not to do that. Die. Dying's bad, MK. Good attack. Good trade for them, because if, if they don't make that trade, then I can make a 1-1 with Castle to trade with the 3-1. ones. It was probably going to die. So I, I cannot play Othakaya and Castle Art and Veil. Vale. So we're not going to play Othakaya yet. Um, if they draw Embercleave here, I die. That's just how it is. I mean, I no matter what I would... I mean, yeah, like I would just be dead to em Embercleave either way. Yes, I, I am trash bad. <laughs> Circle of loyalty is cool, Matthew. So we're hoping no Ember Cleave. We just get to get our normal Trump block in here.
Nice easy jump. Go to damage. I like it. I'm just going to be activating Castle Arden Veil vale instead of playing, though, the Kaya. Go, Castle, go. Mortify does not destroy cleave, no, but Mortify would be able to destroy a creature that's a cleaved. Hmm. That doesn't really work too well. It's like equipped, but with cleave. A cleaved. <laughs> Tulsmer, friend, friend of Dodd. That's true. Tulsmer is great. Oh baby, combo. Got a good head on those shoulders. Combo. We get to create two wolves. Tulsmer say your wolves gain three life each, and you get to fight. Boom. Thanks, Matashki. All right, GG's. Got two wins. Not dead yet. Let's go for number three. Yep, I like the I like the red aggro matchups. I thought there was going to be a lot of aggro in, in this kind of event. I was comfortable with this deck in that um, sense. Wow, we got 1,600 people in here. Welcome, everybody. If you're kind of newer to the, the stream, um, this is what I do each and every day. I play Magic the Gathering. I play different different decks, like how you, this Abzan here is a different deck. You know, like we like making decks, playing a lot of brews. You don't really see me playing the top decks very much at all. Um, but yes, yeah, so we have a lot of fun with it. Tomorrow, though, is going to be a special stream. We're going to go through every single card um, with in Theros and talk about how it could be used in Standard. Every single card, all the commons, uncommons, everything. So we'll start it. We'll start early. We'll start at one Eastern. My normal stream time is three to ten Eastern time every single day. Ada Mor Morgan. What's up, Ada? Thank you so much. Ada Morgan. Or it could be Adam Argon also. Could be anything. Could be a uh, Demargon. Yeah, Shuffler not, not helping me out too much. That's okay. So it's basically either keep Paradise Druid and then be able to have, you know, Paradise Druid help cast the other cards, you know, be another mana source that we don't have. 
which is the safer hand, or let's go for the higher upside of being able to curve Hero of Precinct 1 into other stuff. And I am going with the higher upside. So my least favorite matchup, Edge Roll Innkeeper. This may be Golgari, which I, I like Golgari a little bit more than the Teamer. The Teamer is, is really tough. I hope it's not Teamer. There you go. Nice, Matthew. Uh, it's Teamer again. Why do we have to face this crappy deck twice? Bant. All right, well, this is definitely better for us than um, than Teamer. But obviously, on my multi five, I'm in a rough spot still. Don't be surprised if we meet again. So I don't know what I'm doing about this questing beast. Maybe that was a hasty mortify on my part. If I don't mortify there, could it could have just been like Lovestruck Beast though? Joe, refresh your stream. And look for a notification. In the chat. I'm I'm not advertising that Siege Breaker. I don't know. But I'm when people ask, I'm not answering. What's up, Joe? There we go. Risa. Thank you, Joe. They have to have another 1-1 in hand if they're just going to uh, yeah, play the Love Struck Beast out. Man. I don't have anything, like, you know, I obviously have to block here. I don't have any draw that keeps me alive. Um, I guess there's no reason not to block the 5-5 five five and block the 4-4 four four instead, but there's, there's not really a... I mean, I guess I could draw... I guess I, guess I draw a land, then draw, like, Mortify... I guess, yeah, I guess Mortify would work, because that would kill Questing Beast and then give me a 1-1 one -one to, to block. Nope. No, Mortify doesn't work either. I don't think it does, right? Because I kill that. No. I guess if I would have blocked Lovestruck Beast last last turn, I was just already... I already kind of gave up, but I guess if I would have blocked Lovestruck Beast... Um... Okay, never mind. I don't I don't know what the point of holding Edgewell and Keeper back is, but we're still alive. What's up, Tree Fitty? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. No. 
No, I wouldn't particularly say I have a good sideboard plan here. It's a better chance than than Teamer, though. Kaya's Wrath is, is going to be a lot better here than what is than it is against Teamer. And I do like to spark more because they're more focused on Nyssa. So like Nyssa, Teferi. I don't really need Knight of Autumn as much. And just so to spark's a lot better because of questing beast and Nyssa. Um I assume they're a Krasis deck also. I guess I'm not too sure about Krasis. Uh, that's a sounds like a fair assumption. I wonder if I can just not play Trophy. Trophy, Trophy in these matchups, like they have so much card advantage, they get to use the extra mana. It's just too much of a downside. Oh, the Kaya Midnight Reaper, Soren are three cards that I don't love. As far as which one I'm going to take out, kind of debating. Possible I don't need four to spark. That's a lot of to spark. Thanks, Drug Wizard. Thank you so much. Thanks for cheers. Yeah. Kethis helps you cast the four, five, and six mana cards. They are all legendary cards. So Kethis is a ramp spell for you. And you want to play it in the late game to get back um, to replay legendary cards from your graveyard as well. Doesn't look great. Oath still kills plenty of other things just because it doesn't kill Questing Beast or Lovestruck Beast. It's not like they're only playing two cards in their deck. I mean, you said no need to gain life. I that's that's silly. Like, do you see like these things attack? My opponent's playing a deck that's attacking. Like, there's. Certainly reasons to gain life. I, I don't know, Matthew. I don't know what the. What's in the bundle? For, with Elspeth, I don't know. Of course it doesn't, Toti. I don't do that.
Hopefully no spell pairs. Shepherd. It's basically spell pairs. I'd like to draw a fifth land. I'd like to double spell. Thank you. I feel like I'm like out of cards already. I put another Paradise Druid down to the bottom, didn't I? Maybe not. Or maybe I shuffled. Oh, I shuffled because of the Fable Passage. Just because, yeah, killing the 1-1 one, one doesn't mean that the 5-5 five, is not going to be able to attack. I'm, I would be surprised if they have no other 1-1 one, one in hand anywhere. know if they got disconnected I hope hope not that's that's pretty rough for my opponent I guess this is part of the game but that's they got disconnected that's a bad beat for a you know a qualifier tournament like this hey Errol I'm back. When you understand reality, you ether itself serves me. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's close, wizard. Um, found the house I like. <laughs> if they're on McDonald's Wi-Fi, they deserve it, though. Yeah, I assume they're not on McDonald's Wi-Fi, but... Oh, Stein said I have played Arena on McDonald's Wi-Fi and it worked perfectly. Well, that's good. Obviously, I don't like trump blocking with Kethis. Kethis is pretty valuable. Kethis can replay stuff in the graveyard, but um, 
Ugin is also quite valuable. You can kind of think of it like I'm trading Kethis for Ugin, because if I don't block, the Ugin takes that. Or I'm trading Kethis for Questing Beast, because if I don't block, the Ugin would take that. Hits and everything anyway. Super worried about the giant killer. Be nice if they don't have another 1 1 and therefore Love Struck Beast cannot attack. I do want to keep the Dispark available in case of another Questing Beast. I wanted to keep that available. Or I guess Anissa. Harness the elements. I could certainly see them attacking and then using Giant Killer to tap something. Of course, Edder. That's what they're thinking about if they want to tap a creature with Giant Killer. So there's going to be no Nyx basic lands on Arena. What what basic lands are they going to have then? So they're, they're not going to, I thought those were just the normal Theros basic lands. I also don't know too much about it. Truth but. lies beyond. I should shock there to play the Paradise Druid. That should be a shock. So there'll be cosmetics. We Shepard. Oh, Shepard is permanent. Never mind. But yeah, I guess I should have responded to the plus one with my Dispark. I was thinking Shepard was just creature, but I'm wrong. But they're coming in another update. My opponent really must be having connection problems. I don't think time's going to be a factor, though. But you never know. Right on schedule. Bounce the beast. Take a roll one. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. Hopefully, I have enough time to finish all the matches. Secrets manifest before you. Basically, can turn 
Vraska into a draw two. By sacrificing the card that you tick up with Ugin, you get to draw that card, and then you draw another card for Vraska's tick up. So Vraska works well with that with both Liliana. Or sorry, with yeah, with Liliana and Ugin, the two six mana walkers. And also kind of works with Garrick too, getting Garrick an extra loyalty kind of thing. So basically getting rid of that 1-2 to make my attack better. I know that they're going to be able to play a 5-5, five, five, but at this point I'm not that worried about that 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, now we got the engine running. Crank it up. This land, we are all I'll be surprised if we lose this, but we could still lose it. It's not over. The land shall conquer you. Hmm. Thanks for Tim. Yeah, Golgari divination. Yeah. And there's a there's a record right right here, record. I always have my record up on the 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 screen over here when I'm playing any deck, like just normal stream time. Unfortunately, Midnight Reaper is non-token, so I don't get any extra cards for sacrificing these things. Hey, Mindalus with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Mindalus. There you go. We'll destroy this thing. Everybody seems really shocked about the no delay thing. Rude. All right, so that's sub number 20 on the day, our second sub goal. We do every 10 subs is a sub goal, and then every... 20 sub goals do 10 and 20. Every 20 sub goals, we do a 12 hour stream. Sacrifices must um. It's either play Paradise Druid or activate Castle. I'm going to just activate Castle. I oh, know. Thank you, Mindalus. Oh, okay. Awesome. Glad to hear. Oh, GG's, Mindalus. GG's. <clears throat> Wizards also had a very strong anti um anti stream snipe policy that they said during during one of the other MCQ announce you know like uh announcement things that I read more. I didn't really have time to read anything with this one, but I assume they would keep it the same where cuz they wanted wanted people to stream the MCQs and they said if they could verify anybody stream sniping that they would be banning their account. Right, so I'm not too worried about it. Friend. But if it gets reported and they can verify it. I don't know how they would. I don't I don't know how that, that all that stuff works. I'm just I just want to, I just want y'all to have the best viewing experience. Really, that's that's what it's all about, and that's the best viewing experience. 
but they sent out like in one of the previous ones the you know it's a real stern notification of like don't stream snipe Why do I even double block? What am I doing? It's a 3 2, not a 2 2. Poor lady gets thrown out of the castle and has to go fight an animated forest. That'd be scary. All right, draw some more cards. Ooh, Tulsmer. What do we got over here? Another hero? I'll take another hero. Alright, so the plan is Golgari Queen ultimate, attack them, because we're going wide. That's the plan. Looks like that plan's going to work. Behold, nature's true power. Yeah, that's the, I mean that's that's my plan. Ultimate Vraska and, and then attack and win. Vraska old minus nine. Whenever any of my creatures deal damage to them, they lose the game. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Math checks out. The next wound will be fatal. I wish game one was more of a game. You know, game one we had that mold of five and didn't really get to do anything. You know, like we got ran over by Lovestruck Beast questing be super fast because how slow my opponent's going if we could have actually played like a, a reasonable game back and forth a little bit. The time would be much more of a factor than what it currently is. I mean, I, I really think my opponent's connection isn't good. I don't, I mean, so that's, that's what's going on there. I really think their connection um, is something they're struggling with. There's so many shades of black. All right, four to Sparks, one of the Kaya. Let's go. I don't know. I kind of feel like I should be playing the Soren. Soren kills to fairy very efficiently. <laughs> so many shapes of cats. No questing beast policy. It's a bad card. That's pretty silly. I understand it doesn't... Doesn't have... Um, I mean, it's better the more people play Planeswalkers, certainly, but haste is a, is a uh, good, powerful mechanic.
So somebody's like, questing beast an aggro card. I want to play outside of an aggro shell. It's not just an aggro card. I mean, obviously, whoops. Obviously, it is a very, very good aggro card. But it's also a good mid-range card for a deck, you know, playing against smaller creature decks that's trying to put away games. Because the thing is, is you can't just play, like, only removal against, you know, like a red aggro deck or, you know, like a red-black deck. Um and expect to win the game. You know, you do have to put away the game. And Questing Beast does a, a great job of putting away the game, even if it's like your only attacker. You know, it's still like a five-turn clock by itself, while it's also playing defense. It's also a good defensive card. It's just one of the, one of the best combat cards for the combat step. Um, for its mana cost and standard. So if you're basically if you're interested in attacking or blocking, Questing Beast is very good. But if your deck is not interested in attacking nor blocking, you do not really need Questing Beast. Because that's all it's that's all it's really affecting. So in what world would that be? Would Questing Beast be a bad card? That would be the the world where the attacks, where combat, isn't a vital part to winning games. Like if you're playing Blue White Control, you wouldn't put Questing Beast in because combat on your end is not anything that is vital. What's up, Mad Cow? Thank you so much. It's, it's right here. Top left-hand corner. All right, our 21st sub of the day. Hmm. It's better to play Paradise Druid into Golgari Queen, but that does mean my Golgari Queen dies to the 1-1. One, one. I mean, I guess we could see what happens here, and I could go with Hero of Precinct 1 next turn with Tapland, and then Golgari Queen get an extra 1-1. One, one. You know, Golgari Queen's going to be killing Lovestruck Beast. Um, Questing Beast is the card that I really don't want to see right now. Questing Beast would be something that would be a huge problem for me. Also, just the card that we talked about, we have been talking about here recently. Interesting. The Night Reaper is interesting. I guess I could try killing the 1-1 one, one, and then hope they don't have another 1-1 one, one, and then the 5-5 five, five can't attack. That would be like the highest upside. But... Gotta kill the 5-5. Five five. Well, they do have Questing Beast. Best card against me right now. This questing beast is, is pretty rough. So it's going to put us down to eight. I'm going to shock down to six. Okay. So do I shock? Shock Garrick or Mortify. The problem with Shock Garrick, I guess, would be a... 
counter spell. Not expecting that, but that would be a problem. If I go shot Garrick, they could have another questing beast. If I shot Garrick is better against Nissa though, right? Question mark. Oh, really? My go. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I was taking too long because you're at seven minutes and I'm at nineteen. I didn't realize how long I was taking there. Shock Garrett is, is also rough against Shepherd of the Flock. Which obviously we've seen many Shepherd of the Flocks. Could try to go like upkeep mortify is better against Shepherd, but then it's worse against another beast. Where I'd rather uh kill it in combat against another beast basically if they have another beast or a nissa or a shepherd we're in we're in tough if they have any of those three cards we're in a tough spot now because of um because of the power of questing beast Shepard. So yeah, we're in a tough spot. Questing Beast is just basically single-handedly winning this. I mean, I guess not. I guess not single-handedly because it put it back, but I did board in four. Dis you know, I have four Disparks in my deck too, but just don't haven't drawn any of those yet. Ugh, this is rough. If they have another questing beast, I'm very dead. They only have one card. Hopefully they don't. Still notice Bark. Bunch of shock lands. And why shock lands? I don't want to take any damage. Yeah, we need temples. Where are the temples at? Where we could be scrying these other lands away. Shock lands are the worst, actual worst cards for us to draw, and those have been our last three draws. Worst card to draw. Okay, so they scry to the top. So this is tough. I can shock to play Kethis. So that I don't die to Questing Beast. 
I think I have to do that. I think I can't just, after they scry to the top, just be dead to a questing beast. But yes, now now I don't have a great plan against Brazen Borrower. Of course, they need another blue source, and I'm not sure if they just scry blue source to the top. I feel like they probably kept Nyssa or Questing Beast. This is a board state that I wish I did not board out Soren, but Tuls Tulsimer is our best draw. Like, if we draw Tulsimer, the game gets super easy, or much easier. We need to draw Tulsimer. It's not good enough. All right, so one, two, one, two, three... Good enough, that shock. It's a tough call. I had I could not play anything from my graveyard with Kethis. That questing beast got me, you know, it just dealt too much damage. And put me too far behind, and then Obviously, the um, the thing that saved the questing beast and allowed them to attack for that extra four. It's just too much damage. Um, okay. So we went two and two. Um, that much. You know, good close games. You know, we, we won some close ones, lost some close ones. Lots of game threes, I think... We won one match 2-0, and everything else was three games. Um, right? The, the last one was three games? I think it was. Pretty sure it was. <clears throat> Mistake when you destroyed the 5-5. Five five. Yeah. I didn't have cards in hand, you know? And, like, I had, I was, like, running out of cards, and so I, yeah, I minused on the 5-5. Five five because I want... Like, so... Because, yes, the 5-5, five five, I obviously I can get infinite blockers for it. The reason why I minus, though, was because of, like, the Brazen Borrower that, that they had over there. But then also just the threat. Because of such a low life total, the threat of them top-decking Questing Beast is so great that I have, I have no blockers for Questing Beast. You know, like, we drew the Kethys off of that. But that, that threat of them just top-decking Questing Beast any time or, um, or, you know, just drawing a blue source, having that Brazen Borrower which they could play at instant speed, so I couldn't kill it with Garrick. I don't know, it's most, mostly the threat of Questing Beast was why I minused. Um, if I if I know that they're just going to play Hydro Crisis the next turn, obviously I don't want to minus, and I want to just keep that. But I don't I don't really consider that much of a mistake. I don't, um, I don't regret that. I mean, um, that's just how, how the game's played out, you know. That's all right. That's magic. All right, but yeah, so... Short stream today, uh, as y'all as y'all know, as I talked about before, I I was uh, traveling most of the day. I've been up since 4:45 a.m. Uh, I had a couple of flights back home, but I'm I'm back now. So that that's it. You know, we just wanted to play the Mythic Invitational qualifier today, tomorrow. Cool. Get to the stream tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to begin some rest now. So just a short stream today. But then tomorrow we're going to be back at it. We're going to be talking about every single card in Theros and how it could be used in Standard, we're giving them letter grades, all that kind of stuff. It's a fun exercise. I hope you all join in on that um, for those of you all here in Twitch chat. Um, 
and then you know we'll we'll uh, kind of finish the the week out Thursday. We're gonna have Theros on uh, on Arena here, so that's that's exciting. That's almost there. But um, yeah, so set review stream tomorrow. Uh, so that's at one o'clock Eastern, as you can see. My normal stream time, if you're new to the channel, is three to ten Eastern. I play every single day. Um, I do want to play the historic challenge, but it just doesn't look like a, look like I'll really have time. Um, but yeah. All right, so that's all I got. So those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Uh, you know, leave those comments. Uh, let me know how you did it. If you got to play in the Mythic Invitational Qualifier, let me know how you, how it did. Uh, what'd you play? All that kind of stuff. How'd you do? Uh, it's those of y'all on YouTube. And then also um, the Historic Challenge. If you played the Historic Challenge and you did, you know, let me know how you did in this thing. Because this looks pretty exciting um, also. But anyway, that's it here uh, for me today. So thank you so much for watching. And I will see you for the next video.